Live Text Access Training for Real-Time Interlingual Subtitling. Hi, my name is Rocio Bernabe Caro, and I was the leader of the Live Text Access project, in short, LTA. The project has finished now, what means that we were able to reach our goal, that is, to create an open source training program for students and professionals who want to become real-time interlingual subtitlers by re-speaking or velotyping. Maybe you're wondering if by real-time interlingual subtitling we mean the same as speech-to-text interpreting or live captioning. Indeed, we do. We're aware of the differences and how these terms are used in different ways in different countries. We chose the term real-time interlingual subtitling because it best reflects that the job is done under real-time conditions and that the written version mostly appears as subtitles on a screen. So yes, in the LTA course, you will learn how to subtitle, caption, or do speech-to-text interpreting to provide access to content. Real-time uh, subtitling or speech-to-text interpretation is an access services that enables participation for persons with hearing loss or any person who has difficulties accessing the audio. This can be, for instance, when the person is in a noisy environment or when the person does not have a good command of uh, a language. So how does it work? Real-time subtitlers listen to a person speaking and create a, a written version that appears on a screen, mostly as uh, subtitles. Real-time subtitlers can make the written texts either by dictating to a computer using speech recognition software or by typing. Typing the text can be done with any keyboard. In our project, we train for the Velotype keyboard. So, um, very briefly, how the techniques work. The videos are without audio. First, we speaking. In re-speaking, a subtitler um, listens to a person speaking and dictates the text to a computer using speech recognition software. The software creates the written text, which appears then on a screen. Here you see our partner, Julia Böchert, re-speaking a live TV show. She's working from a separate room and wears a headset for receiving the audio from the studio directly. When she listens to the interview, she dictates into the computer. She dictates both text and punctuation. At the same time, she is double checking the accuracy of the text created by the software and uses the keyboard to make corrections if necessary. Now, velotyping. In velotyping, the subtitler or speech to text interpreter uses the keyboard to create a written version of a speech. In our course, we use uh, velotyping. Um, of course, you can use other, other keyboards. For instance, you can use a palantype keyboard, a stenotype, or a regular QWERTY keyboard. Velotype is a chord keyboard. That means a keyboard that allows the user to press several keys simultaneously to create syllables. This way of typing is faster than typing with a regular keyboard. Here you see our partner, Vim Gerbex. Vim shows the special setup of the Velotype keyboard and the keys. The consonants are placed on the, placed on the outside and the vowels in the middle. In this example, he presses four different keys, keys at the same time to write the word stop. You may be asking yourself why we do need such a training program and also what qualifies us and the consortium to create such a training program. Let me try to answer these questions. Our partner, Vin Gerbex, had the project idea. Years ago, he identified the need for more qualified professionals across Europe. As a professional himself, he was very busy and found it difficult to find colleagues to take over those jobs that he couldn't do himself. Some years before, in 2015, 
our partner, the European Federation of Heart of Hearing, in short, EFO, had reported both a lack of accessibility in several countries and inconsistencies in the quality provided and the context covered by the service. Around the same time, scholars such as our partner Carlo Eugeni had already detected that training programs often only taught one technique, for instance, re-speaking, and often prepare trainees only for some working contexts, often live TV and conferences, leaving out other ones such as education, cultural events, parliamentary assemblies or online settings. Eventually, the consortium came together. The partners are three universities with extensive experience in teaching and research in the field of accessibility. These are the, the SDI Munich, my university, the University Autónoma de Barcelona from Spain, and SSML, Escuela Superiore per Mediatori Linguistici de Pisa. Three service providers, Subti Access from Italy, who is specialized in cultural events, CDF Digital, which is a spe specialized in live TV, and Velotype with Vim, who is an all-rounder in the field. Our partner EFO is in charge or was in charge of guiding us to ensure that our training program will train to meet the end user's needs and expectations. Lastly, the European Certification and Qualification Association um, was in charge of monitoring the program's quality to make it transferable across Europe in both vocational and academic education. Before you dive into the course and materials, I would like to take you behind the scenes. So bear with me for some minutes and watch with me some milestones of the project. Started in September 2018, we were all excited, each of us, in our, in our own way. Our kickoff meeting took place in Milan, in Italy. Here we met face to face for the first time. It was very hot, but we had a really great time. Here you see us working at the Civica Scuola di Milano per Traduttori e Interpreti, who was so kind to host us during those days. It turned out that we also worked very efficiently together since uh, we already created a first draft of the skills card and presented um, the skills cards and the project at the fifth international symposium for live subtitling and accessibility. After that, intellectual output one started. The output was led by my institution and aimed to gather current knowledge on training across Europe. To do this, we conducted an online survey and presented the results at our first conference in Munich. The next milestone was the relaunch of our webpage, thanks to CDF Digital. Yes, this is the one that you have now. IO2 Intellectual Output 2 was led by Carlo Eugeni and Silvia Velardi from SSML Pisa. We presented the results in PISA at the Giornata del Traduttore. We also had a workshop and a transnational project meeting. PISA was great fun and we became quite a cohesive team. After that, the creation of the materials started. The leader of this intellectual output was Wim Gerbex. Let me tell you, I'm glad that he has uh, such a northern quiet personality because we really made him crazy for almost one and a half years. Bim, how do I cut a video? Where is the template for the presentation? How do I do a zoom in or out in a PowerPoint slide? And Bim, always cool. Yes, no problem. Thank you, Bim. Intellectual Output 4 was led by UAV. Pilar Orero and Stella Onsins managed the assessment of the materials. The protocols helped us uh, through the process of creation and are now available for you to download on our webpage. The external evaluation through a focus group provides us with a clear yes, you are on the right path. The pandemic hit us uh, hard, as many others. Our transnational project meetings and conferences had to be online. 
FO offered us uh, to use their Zoom platform for the regular meetings. This was a game changer because until then, all our meetings were per chat without video. With Zoom and live subtitling for the meetings, we communicated better, faster, and more directly again. Here you see our third conference, which SAPTI Access organized at the UAB Moodle platform. The participation was great. We had 222 participants and we were able to present the assessment results and listen to interesting speeches by invited speakers. The last intellectual output or work package was intellectual output five. This um, output was led by the CQA and um, uh, we have, uh, we're very happy to have this great result of the project, which is the news certificate, Intersteno ECQA certificate for live subtitlers. Our last conference took place on July 9th, 2021 at the CDF Digital Studios in Mainz, Germany. We mainly had live speeches and ad hoc uh, discussions with the LTA partners and our guests. The response was very positive and allowed us to say our goodbyes, very proud of our achievements. So now the lights have gone out for the LTA project and they are on for you to start the training. We hope you will enjoy it. LTA Live Text Access Universitat Autonoma de Barcelona SDI Internationale Hochschule Scuola Superiore per Mediatori Linguistici ZDF Digital European Federation of Hard of Hearing People FO Velotype Subti Access European Certification and Qualification Association ECQA Co-funded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union Erasmus Plus project 2018-1 Dash DE01 KA203 004218. The information and views set on this presentation are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the official opinion of the European Union. Neither the European Union institutions and bodies nor any person acting on their behalf may be held responsible for the use which may be made of the information contained here.